The following video contains excerpts from our playbook, Day 1 UC on C Series ESXi Host Configuration. For a complete configuration guide, subscribers can download the playbook from our website. Welcome to our drawing, Day 1 C Series Server Deployment for Cisco Collaboration ESXi Host Configuration using the vSphere GUI. In this drawing, we'll look at the initial configuration of the ESXi host using the vSphere GUI. Here are the Day 1 tasks for Cisco Collab on C-Series. On Day 1, we deploy the C-Series server itself. On Day 1, we also deploy the hypervisor, our ESXi host. Only a subset of the tasks are required for BE deployment. We'll run through everything for completeness. The following tasks are part of ESXi host configuration using the vSphere client. License VMware. If you have a VE, this has been done for you, but you should back up the license key now. Verify data store contents. NTP configuration. Configure vSwitch port groups. User configuration. This is an optional task. And backup OVAs and ISOs. Whether you have a single server and no HA, an HA deployment with two servers, or a larger deployment with many servers, the ESXi hosts are configured the same except for names and addresses. Now we can continue the ESXi host configuration using the vSphere client. Your host is listed in the inventory on the left, and the navigation tabs are highlighted. You can hit Control shift h to get this view. Navigate to Configuration Licensed Features under Software. BEs will be licensed. This host is running on an evaluation license. Click Edit to assign a new license or to view the existing one. Your server is now licensed. If you have a BE, this is what you'll see under Configuration Licensed Features. If you have a BE, note the license key. It was mailed to you with your server, but you might as well grab a copy now. Navigate to Configuration Storage. Under Data Stores, you should find Data Store 1. This is the default name for the first data store. For a BE, this is the RAID volume into which ESXi was installed. Right-click on Data Store 1 and select Browse Data Store. In Data Store 1, you should have an OVA ISO folder where Cisco has deposited all the software you need for your BE deployment. If you don't have a BE, create an ISO folder. You can upload your media to this folder when you get it from Cisco. Explore the contents of the directories. You should find both the installation media, the ISO files, and the OVAs to use to install the applications. Be sure to back up the OVA ISO folder. The Enterprise 20 VE6000 OVA ISO folder is 16.8 gig. Back this folder up by downloading it to a secure location. It will take a while, but it's necessary. Select the OVA ISO folder and click the download file icon. Select a target folder for the files. Remember, you'll need access to the OVA files when you install the applications. It goes without saying that NTP should be properly configured. Navigate to Configuration, Time Configuration, under Software. The date and time are not correct and the NTP is not configured. Click Properties to configure NTP. The next thing to do is vSwitch Configuration. Enterprise 20 uses the BE6000 medium density server C220 M3S SFF tested reference configuration number 2. This TRC uses only the LOM for networking. Other TRCs supplement the LOM card with a quad gig E card. We'll add drawings for that configuration as soon as we can. Enterprise 20 has a production hypervisor VLAN for management of our virtual applications using VMware hosts and vCenter. This VLAN is routed. 
We can access this VLAN from anywhere in the enterprise depending on any restrictions we impose on traffic between VLANs in the enterprise. We've distributed our collaboration apps across the Production Collab A and Production Collab B VLANs. We use only the vSwitch 0 for the BE6000 medium density server. The two rightmost LOM ports, 0 and 1, are already configured as uplinks for vSwitch 0. We have a default vSwitch 0 configuration and need to complete its configuration. We'll organize our port groups into two categories. All traffic for our collaboration apps will be in the Collab App Port Groups category. All other traffic will be in the Other Port Groups category. The Other Port Groups category will use both physical adapters. VM NIC0 will be active and VM NIC1 will be standby. The Collab App Port Groups will have VM NIC0 standby and VM NIC1 will be active. In this way, we isolate the collaboration traffic from other traffic at the same time as providing redundant uplinks. Here are some common NIC teaming settings to consider. Load balancing. We have one active and one standby adapter per port group, so it doesn't matter what setting is configured here. Network failure detection will be set to beacon probing. Beacon probing sends layer 2 Ethernet broadcasts from every VM NIC in the vSwitch on every VLAN which uses that VM NIC. All the other VM NICs that have the same VLAN defined will receive the broadcast frames. As soon as three consecutive beacon packets have not been received, the VM NIC will be considered down and a failover procedure will be triggered. Notify switches will be set to yes. If a virtual machine moves to a different uplink, a RARP will be sent out that uplink to update northbound switch bridge forwarding tables. Failback is set to no to prevent automatic reversion to a flapping link. There are disadvantages to this and reasonable arguments to set failback to yes. We've decided to go with no because we've seen Cisco Advanced Services recommend this for mega cluster deployments. Remember, setting this to no means you need to manually fail back after a network problem is resolved. We'll rename the VM kernel port group Production Hypervisor, which will be on the Production Hypervisor VLAN. We need port groups defined for the Production Collab A and Production Collab B VLANs. With your host selected in Inventory, navigate to Configuration Networking under Hardware. You see vSwitch 0. Unless you have a quad gig e card, this is the only vSwitch you need to worry about. As part of ESXi host configuration using the console, both network adapters have been added to vSwitch 0. Click on the indicated icons to see the CDP neighbor information. CDP is great. Validate that the vSwitch0 uplinks are connected to the correct switch ports. The server port used for SIMC will not show up anywhere in the vSphere GUI. vSwitch0 has two default port groups. VM Network, a default port group for virtual machines. Enterprise 20 will delete this first thing. And the Management Network, the VM kernel port group providing management access to the ESXi host. Click on Properties for vSwitch0 to configure your ESXi host networking. Here are the VLANs used for base deployment. The Production Hypervisor and Collab A and Collab B VLANs need to be carried on the trunks for the vSwitch0 uplinks. See our rack and cable drawing. Click Close to return to the networking window to see the base vSwitch configuration. ESXi host networking is configured. The root account is the only account automatically created during installation. Many enterprises configure additional users. One reason for this is to log which user has performed which operation. Enterprise 20 creates a user on ESXi host to use when adding the host to vCenter. You may have heard you need to disable LRO. Do not disable LRO for 9.x software. LRO is enabled in ESXi 4.1 and later. It doesn't work well with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 4.x. 
CUCM 8.6 and above use RHEL 5.x. We are using 9.1.2 or higher, which uses RHEL 5.x. Don't forget to back up the OVA ISO folder. The server is racked and cabled, and the upstream switches are properly configured. The ESXi host is configured and ready for Cisco Collaboration app installation. You can set up ESXi host monitoring now, or you can move on to your day two tasks. Thanks for watching.